and welcome to Phuket In Focus. Firstly, a look at some things you've been saying on our websites during the week about news today. And Kirsty, the newsreader's clothes, Marie Anderson Morn said, love the necklace. In relation to the story on news today, what would you like to say to the local tuk-tuk and taxi drivers? We did a survey. The winning answer was, what are you afraid of? Competition? Coming in as the second most popular answer, time to get some less expensive quality public transport options. A go-go home, yeah, that's his name, said, I could add several other things I'd like to say to these drivers, but I don't think they'd be suitable to print here. In our first week on the news, we had Phuket Live's Jason Wilder doing the introductions. Someone commented on Jason's, well, his wild look. A go-go home said, if Jason's saving for a new comb, I'd like to contribute to it. 10 baht, in fact. Well, go, go home. Just remember, Jason is the island's most popular drive show presenter. He doesn't have to look good for radio, but we'll see what we can do about getting him a comb. Now, a few good comments during the week about the first week of programs on News Today. Stephen Lever said, this is what Phuket needs and a great presenter. Well done to you all. Chris Stopper said, since it started, nothing else is more interesting than keeping watching the Phuket News TV. Good job. And Daniel Machado, he said, better and better. A question relating to news today, what should we do with the ongoing jet ski scam problem in Phuket? Chris Stopper said, the best approach could be to avoid renting them altogether. Just ban jet skis on all of Phuket's beaches. A story about the installation of new ramps for wheelchair bound tourists, visitors and locals in the Phuket news this week. An interesting observation from a go go home, seems to be very popular this week. He said, OK, ramps are a great idea. Then all they need is usable footpaths to get to them. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. Keep the feedback coming. It's your TV station. So share your thoughts and join the conversation. Just like us on our Facebook page. You can find that by going to the Phuket News, clicking TV and clicking the Facebook link. Coming up on Phuket in Focus this week is an interview with Jack, the Russian sailor who's just arrived back in Phuket following an epic four-year voyage around the world in a 40-foot inflatable catamaran. Also, we'll be speaking to Simon O oh from the Phuket News as we go behind the stories in this week's edition. All coming up on Phuket in Focus. <laughs> Whoa, hello, Sawadi Krapin on Cup. Jason Wilder here from Drive on Phuket's Live 89.5. Feel the fun. Drive on Live with Jason Wilder, weekdays from 3, brought to you by the Belgian Beer Cafe on Phuket's Live 89.5. Welcome back to Phuket in Focus. And, well, I'm speaking to a gentleman now who's just rolled into the studio. Would you believe he sailed around the world in an inflatable catamaran? I'd like to welcome Jack to the studio. Thanks for coming in, Jack. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Jack, uh, what's your full name? The real name, Evgeny Kovalevsky. Okay. It's a Russian name. From Russia? Yes. Why did you sail around the world in an inflatable catamaran? Actually, I'm an adventurer in my heart, and I do it since 1974. I was traveling in different countries, and uh, sometimes even I was rafting down Everest. I was first who rafted down northern river of Everest, Arun. Aren't rafts meant to be in the water, not on the side it's of a... It's a puddling. <laughs> so I'm extreme sportsman in my heart. Yeah. So I hate it, but I cannot live another style. Okay, okay. That's why I decided to go around the world, because ocean is real nature. Yeah. And to be many, many months, many years on the surface, it's possible to understand what is connection between a human being and the nature. That's one idea. Another idea to to check, to test myself, is it possible or not Okay. to survive. When did the journey start? Five years ago, in 2008, uh, official start was in Phuket, Chalon Bay, uh -huh. in Thailand. Right. Five years ago. Okay. Well, over the five years, where have you traveled? Which places have you gone to? Uh, so, from Phuket, yeah. in 2008, yeah. we crossed the Indian Ocean up to Arab Emirates. Yeah. Uh, next year, we continue to Seychelles Island. Uh, but after first stage, we were coming back to Russia because the catamaran was completely broken. <laughs> and we came, it was our design, our captain Anatoly Kulik from uh, Siberia, from Novosibirsk. He made new one. We came back to Arab Emirates and uh, sailed to Seychelles. Seychelles. Again, completely broken. Right. 
again back to Russia. Fix up the catamaran? A new catamaran, absolutely new. It was trimaran, three balloons. Okay. And uh, from Seychelles, uh, we went around the Cape, Cape of Good Hope, South Cape Africa. Hope. It was yep. terrible. And crossed Atlantic. Yep. And last year, it was forced. Uh, the beginning of fourth stage in Brazil. Yeah. We crossed the Caribbean Sea to Mexico, crossed Mexico by track because our catamaran is not yacht, it's not ship. It's possible to dismantle. Yes. We dismantle it in uh, uh, Atlantic coast and put it to the track. So it was too wide for the Panama Canal. F uh, no, 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 through Pan Panama Channel, through Mexico. Oh, okay. By by big car. Right. Crossed by big car, fixed again. You cheated. No, no, no. It's the unique construction, right? And all the expedition was test: is it possible or not to use dismantable, uh, inflatable Inflated. catamaran in the ocean? Okay. How this, how big is the catamaran? Uh, this last construction from uh, Brazil to here to Phuket, uh, twelve meters length and five meters wide. Wide. Okay. It's still tiny. How many of you on the trip? They finished at the beginning six, in yes. the end four. What happened to the other two? Uh, one man uh, uh, came back to Russia because he got um, obsessed on liver. Yeah. In Mexico, special bacteria, and he just got disease. And uh, uh, from Mexico to Fiji, it was lady. Captain invited her because it's the territory of French Polynesia, and they say that French people don't like to speak English. So he invited the yacht, yacht lady she was uh, speaking perfect French, so okay. she helped us. But from Fiji, she went back. Now, what did you eat during the voyage? Did you take a lot of provisions with you, or uh, did you catch It's an energy and... diet. Uh, this is dry food. Yes. Dry food is powder mixed with water. Yeah. One minute mixed, one minute drink. Sounds Lunch. revolting. But our captain is very good cook. He could produce soup, uh, fried potato. Yeah. Sometimes uh, on the islands we bought cucumber, uh, tomato, rice, noodles. We have gas uh, stove and gas balloon, so we could cook right on the surface. But it's unusual. It's no cabin, no shower, no water, no nothing. It's basic. We just lift on the deck, and if it is rainy, all to us. Well, the good news is that uh, people can read about it on the front page of this week's uh, the Phuket News yeah. and Novosti Phuketa, the, the Russian paper. Yes. Uh, what is your next adventure? Uh, one idea to climb Everest. Uh, yeah, people have done that before. Yes, but I want to. I'm already teacher. Yeah. I have uh, pupils. Yes. Uh, young travelers. Send I, them up. You do something more, uh, more relaxing. I want to fly to Mars. Okay. This is a crazy idea. The planet, Mars. Cu currently, it's probably crazy. And yes. uh, I want to continue the uh, searching for Shambhala in Western Tibet or some, somewhere in Himalayas. Just uh, and just why, like very Se much searching Shambhala. Searching for? Shambhala, it's... Uh, oh, Shangri-La. Shangri-La. Right. I like uh, Buddhist territories. Yes. Yeah. I like gods of uh, Hindu and Buddhist. Yes. So I was 10 times in Himalayas. And uh, in Western Tibet, I found the place, yeah. and I believe that this is capital, geographical capital of Shambhala, Shangri-La. Okay. It's a very nice place, close to Kailas Mount, Holy Mount. Okay. I like it very much. Well, Jack, thank heavens there are people like you who do something that you want to do. You do it with passion. You explore what's over the other side of the hill. And without people like you, uh, we wouldn't be technologically advanced because we need people like you to try different things. Thank you very much for going around the world, proving that you can sail around the world in a catamaran or a trimaran which is inflatable and we look forward to uh, hearing about your next adventures going to Mars. Thank you Tim. It seems to me all must be in balance. The world needs in the people like you and like me. And crazy people like you. Yes. <laughs> Jack, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Phuket in focus. Back soon. And welcome back to Phuket in Focus. Great every week to speak to the managing editor of the Phuket News, Simon Ostheimer. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, got a great story on the front, a bit of a, a, a scoop. 
we've got these sailors who set out from Phuket five years ago. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've um, been around the world. Apparently so. Yeah, some five years ago, a group of Russian sailors set off from Phuket, around the world trip, um, on the dinghy you can see on the front page, uh, and they just arrived uh, back um, last week. It's not just any voyage because this was a 12 metre inflatable catamaran. Yeah, yeah, and sort of along the way they encountered uh, uh, sharks and, and storms and all sorts of amazing things, but we were completely unaware of this until um, they arrived back. Yeah, and uh, we've got a, a feature interview with uh, Jack, who was uh, the, the head organiser of the trip uh, on Phuket in Focus a bit later, so uh, we'll hear from Jack. So we'll move on from that story. Let's move into the paper. And uh, which ones were we going to talk to you about? We were going to talk to you about this well, the, one. The Sea Gypsies. The Sea um, Gypsies, yeah. Very interesting story. Well, the Sea Gypsies have had a bit of a, a hard time uh, in Phuket and in uh, the region generally, uh, basically because they're traditionally migratory people. They go from place to place and they have no fixed abode. Um, and now in Phuket, their land is basically, um, other people say that they own it and they're being threatened with eviction from places that they've been for generations. Sounds like the sort of clasping for straws a bit. They've discovered this bone. They're saying this bone might be an ancestor of well, theirs. To dispute any kind of uh, other claim to the land, they need to prove that they had lived there for consecutive generations. And, and now they've discovered a bone, um, presumably of, of a human. Um, it's been taken for forensic testing, and they're going to find out. And um, they'll say it's human. Yes. I'm not sure what that really... But they should be able to date it as well, which maybe will give it uh, more sort of legitimacy. But we'll be following this to find out what, uh, what happens next. It's probably going to spend uh, a lot of time in court, this sort of uh, battle. Yeah, and it's not just uh, in this one particular place. It's all around the island, and as I say, all around the region as well. Yeah. Land rights are difficult for, uh, for the indigenous people right around the world, and mm. um, this is our little local battle. Yep. Okay, let's move into uh, another really good story. And it was a, something that has to happen to Phuket. It's happened mm -hmm. in other parts of the world. Yeah. And that's the issue of disabled access. Yeah. This is a, a, a Russian, uh, I don't say couple, they're not actually together, but it, it's, a, it's a woman and a man. There's two of them. In wheelchairs. Uh, and they, they basically met with the governor to ask him if he would consider putting uh, ramps into Nihon to, to allow more sort of beach access for, for people in wheelchairs and the disabled uh, in general. Um, he seems open to the idea. Uh, I think I mean, there's got to be a lot of other infrastructure put in to help the disabled beyond merely ramps, but there could be a symbol, you know, if this is done, then perhaps they'll take it to the rest of the island as well. It could be the start of something. Got restaurants, uh, government offices, yep. just about every office. Yeah. Uh, imagine if we had to provide disabled access here in our offices, we've got four floors of stairs. It's true, we'd need, we'd need an elevator. Um, but the difficulty is, uh, obviously, there's so much of Phuket that doesn't have walkable sidewalk, you know. Mm. Um, so, you know, you think that has to be fixed first before you start making it even uh, wheelchair friendly. Uh, places like Hong Kong, Singapore, everywhere you go, they, they have the ramps on and off, you know, for the crosswalks. They have uh, blind uh, guidelines on the road. Um, there's even the crosswalk. When you press the button, it makes a noise. You know, yeah. for, for, so there's a whole bunch of things that needs to be done um, beyond building ramps to get onto the beach. But as I say, it could be the, the launch of, of something positive. I mean, Thai people are, are Buddhist and generally caring people. It's funny that uh, the concept of uh, access and uh, assistance for disabled people hasn't really caught on here. Um, I think it's just part of developing as a country. It's, it's something maybe in the West people have perhaps taken for granted. And there's just so many things that they have to do. I mean, we still have power outages regularly, um, you know, the power lines need to be done. Um, so it's just part of ongoing infrastructural improvements and development of society. A couple of weeks ago, I had a few problems getting the Phuket news out with a bit of a power failure and problems with uh, servers and things. That was a late night. It yeah. was a late night. These things happen with computers. This gentleman's had a particularly bad week. Mm. He's uh, lost his computer and a lot with it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's um, a local hotelier uh, and basically he's lost his it's MacBook Pro with, with thousands and thousands of, of images. Basically, his lifetime's work in photography. Uh, and he's now um, offering a 100,000 baht reward uh, for the return of his property. And it's not so much about you know, the, the equipment itself, the technology, it's what's on it. It's, it's the memories, it's the... He's not the first person in Phuket to have a computer stolen. I've had two stolen, mm. and I'm on to my third at the moment. Yeah, third uh, time's the charm. <laughs> but the issue is, yeah, it's not so much the actual computers, it's the things that you had on it. I lost uh, years of photos. 
not as important as his photos, mm. but uh, still they're my memories and uh, they're gone. Yeah. So what do you do? You back everything up. Um, what happened last time is I backed everything up onto another hard drive mm -hmm. and they stole that too. Right. Well, I guess the next option is cloud computing, right? It's everything in the cloud and then you'll never lose it. That's right. But everyone can see it. There's a worry there, isn't it? There's a trade-off. Let's go to uh, Life, which is the magazine you have in the middle of the Phuket News each week. Always a good read. What's yeah. on the front page this week? Um, well, this, yeah, as you can see here, a giant pair of eyes staring back at you. Um, it's Jody Halton. He's um, done an investigation into the Magic Eyes uh, campaign, which was something from years past uh, to combat sort of pollution and littering uh, across Thailand. A very, very successful campaign, but it kind of died out, uh, and now it's maybe it's time to be reintroducing it with the, the pollution problems that we have across the island. So what's the idea with the magic eyes? It's sort of saying people are watching you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of to build sort of social uh, conscience, you know, get the community involved and, you know, if you see someone littering, you go and tell them that's it's not appropriate. You know, it goes in the bin. Oh, that'd go down well. Well, it's, it, yeah, but it, the idea is it's meant to be community-led rather than top-down. It's, it's to your peers. So, so it, rather than putting be, signs up saying, uh, put your litter in the bin. Yeah. This is a, okay. Well, you know, that you should be ashamed that you're littering your, your own country, your own home, as it were. Okay. So are you going to be seeing more of these green signs around the island? Uh, well, it's something that's, that's, that's been raised at regular environmental meetings of uh, SEEK and other uh, green groups across the island. So. It's just at the discussion stage right now, but maybe we'll see this um, implemented again in the future. Let's um, move into life this week and a great article about who you call Monkey Man. Yep. Um, John Gray, a.k.a. Ling Yai, this is his Thai nickname, which literally means big monkey. Um, he's a big guy and he does have a lot of facial hair. Um, uh, we've done a sit-down, basically, Jody again has done a sit-down interview with him um, about... Uh, the environment, the ecology, um, his life story, uh, and um, also his sea kayaking business, which a lot of people will, will know him for in Phuket. But he's been around for a long time, and he's got some stories from Hawaii and other places like that. It's very entertaining. He'd take you to some great spots, I bet. Yes. Yeah. And Jody, he has been very busy this week, <laughs> Jody busy. Houghton. Uh, you sent him off uh, to some sort of mechanical monster, and he's been the guinea pig for some experiment, it looks like. What's mm. he doing? There were this... Um, wasn't even something that I had to, to order him to do. He kind of jumped at the chance. Uh, it was it's a new anti-gravity treadmill um, at Bangkok Hospital Phuket. Um, as it sounds, you actually um, have the feeling of weightlessness um, as you're running on a treadmill. Um, they kind of you go. I haven't seen it, but uh, Jody told me you kind of step on the trainer a uh, treadmill, and then they zip you in, completely like seal you in inside a bag, vacuum out some of the air, uh, and then completely yeah gives that kind of walking on air feeling. It would just make me feel cramped and constrained. Yeah, but it's just the bottom half of your body. The top half is still, is still open. Um, but apparently very good for sort of people with knee injuries and things oh, like that. Right. Uh, and they also suggest it for uh, athletes as a way of, of training, kind of lessening the impact on the joints. Um, so it's kind of got two uses. Okay. Well, um, something that I suppose we might see is a ride sometime in Patong soon. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, every week we'll see uh, the Phuket News. It comes out every Friday. Mm -hmm. It's available at over 600 places around the island. That's right. And uh, we'd recommend it's a great read. You've got the news in the, the Phuket News and in the middle you've got Life, mm -hmm. which will keep, um, keep you busy all weekend. Uh, on, and and on just a reminder, obviously, the Life content is, is not online. If you want to read it, you have to buy it. Yeah, so we tell people if you want to know the latest news, go to thepuketnews.com, mm -hmm. but you're not going to find life online, so you need to buy the paper. Exactly. And we'll get 20 cents, 20 baht every time you do it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Simon Ostheimer, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Tim. Simon Ostheimer from the Phuket News, back with more Phuket in Focus in just a moment. <laughs>